Hi, Michael Fox here. Today I am visiting the Pollinator Link Garden of Rob Lucas, an urban wildlife oasis. Rob's garden provides a safe space for wildlife moving between Kedron Brook, where it flows through Shore Park, and the Melrose Park bush care site. So you just make the the ponds out of um, these kids' yeah. clam shells. Yeah, well, this is a bit of a job. This one every every day I have to put water in it because uh, it leaks. But it's got one pot, uh, shell inside the other. Mm. Um, I think it's the paper bark roots. <laughs> you know, just sucking the oh, water okay. out all the time. Cause it, it's so hard the paper bark the roots are yeah, these. Mm. which I don't mind. You know, it's probably cleaning the water out a bit too. But, um, uh, this is the dirtiest that these ponds have been. I think I because I just emptied a heap of buckets and things into it, but you can see the, the fish mm. are doing alright. Mm. I just wish we could get a tadpole. And the guppies don't eat tadpoles? No, they don't seem to, but the, well, they don't recommend them. Obviously, they're not native too, so. Um, but uh, there's. Um... It's the only success I've had. My other, other native fish I've put in have died. I, I must persist with it, you know, but I just don't have the native fish at the moment. It'd be nice to promote them, but I, to tell you the truth, um, we get all the puddles down in the along the creek, um, and there's just all the little fish are dying in the puddles, and that's when I get my fish. <laughs> I feel sorry for them, you know. And that also, uh, I get tadpoles too. Mm. The, the puddles never last long enough for the tadpoles, so I get them and put them in the ponds. Um, they're usually, I think, the uh, striped marsh frogs. So you get the striped marsh frogs yeah. and the. Um... I haven't had tusk frogs. Tusk frogs. I haven't had any green tree frogs. There was one on the roof the other night. Um, so is that more eggs in the background there? Yeah. But they're so sticky. I'd pick them up to show you because they, they, you see them. They start to wriggle around. Oh, there's a tusk frog there next to the eggs. Very. If, if you see see the second lot of eggs. Yeah. See next to the second lot of eggs is just a little dark little figure poked yeah. out of the water. It's very nondescript. You turn them over button, they've got the tigery sort of um, you just see his two eyes. Yeah. Can you see that? So yeah, they've just stopped calling at the moment because it's you know the heat of the day. Frog ponds are a good way to provide water and attract wildlife to your garden. As Rob shows, a pond does not have to be expensive. For example, use an old kid's clamshell to make a pond. The ponds don't even have to be large, as Rob's recycled cooking pots shows. Frog ponds provide water for bees and also attract beneficial insects like dragonflies. Adult dragonflies catch and eat mosquitoes and flies on the, on the wing. And the dragonflies, when they lay their eggs, lay them on water or mud in one of your ponds. And the nymphs, the dragonfly nymphs, when they hatch out, will eat the mosquito larva in the pond. A really valuable and interesting uh, insect to have visit your pollinator link garden. But there's heaps of... Um, um Dragonfly larvae seems to go into these cylinder sort of situations more so than the ponds. Okay. So, you know, I'll, I'll show you some dragonflies. The bee likes it. Yeah, well, I've never really, to be honest with you, I've never really noticed the flower much because you're always waiting for the red berry, but um, it's self seeding. There's a few little ones come up there. So it looks a bit like a coral berry. Yeah. So if people so were keen on coral berry, the Yeah, that's right. This is all a bit new, the cars driving down the side. Hoya australis, the wax flower vine, is a popular butterfly f plant feeding the common crow butterfly. And it thrives in our subtropical climate, originating from rainforest areas in uh, eastern Queensland and northern New South Wales. It will thrive in very in a wide range of conditions, including de heavy shade. Tent spider. Oh, is it? 
Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Just winding up a lunch. Yeah. Come on, keep going. We have a lot of Russian tent spiders on the mountain. We have some yeah. of these. Yeah. Yeah, uh, macrobat. Yeah. Spiders and moths, like the two spots tiger moth I photographed in the garden, are not everyone's choice of wildlife to invite into their garden. However, if you want interesting birds like the tawny frogmouth, then you need to provide the food that they eat, like the spiders and moths. The tawny frogmouth in Rob's backyard, in one of the trees, has already raised a family. So providing the full range of food for insect eating birds is an important part of getting them to visit your garden. Thank you Rob for sharing your amazing garden and its wildlife. If you have been inspired by Rob's garden please visit www.pollinatorlink.org to register your garden and help us reach our 2018 target of 1,000 registered Pollinator Link gardens. The Pollinator Link project is a non-profit social enterprise sponsored by the B4C Environment Fund and supported by Brisbane City Council. The objective is to create a city-wide mosaic habitat for birds, butterflies and bees by providing water, food and shelter in backyards balcony gardens, schoolyards and parks. Please register today and join the Pollinator Link community bringing wildlife back to city gardens.